two solutions here in front of the front of me. Uh, one of them is an acid, and the other one is a base. But which one is which? Uh, what we're going to do in this video is do a few tests here. Some of some of which that you, you've done already in um, previous courses, and we're going to see which one is an acid and which one is a base. But I'm also going to use this to talk a little bit more about um, what we call empirical evidence and theoretical knowledge. So we're going to start out by doing a few tests on these solutions, and we're going to be gathering empirical evidence. Afterward, and in the videos that follow, the lessons that follow, we'll be looking at how this evidence leads us towards a theory of acids and bases. So we're going to take some empirical evidence and it's going to evolve into theoretical knowledge of acids and bases. And this is a very common pattern in uh, chemistry and science. We, we often start with a lot of evidence, things that we can observe and measure, and it turns into a theory over time, a theory that we can use to apply to a number of different phenomena uh, that, that helps us explain this phenomena and gives us some insight into how, um, how acids and bases behave. All right, so let's start out by doing a few tests. Um, once again, some of these things that will be familiar to you. So I'm going to start with some red litmus paper. I know it looks kind of, you know, lilac-y there, almost blue, but just trust me, this is red litmus paper, and I'm going to stick in the first one, and it looks like it kind of stays, uh, stays red. Okay, so I want to stay red. What I'm going to do now is take some blue litmus paper. I'm going to stick it in the, the acid and like, ooh, what happened there? Oh, it looks like it turned pink. So when I take blue litmus paper and put it in this particular solution, it turned red, kind of like a reddish pink. So let's do the opposite. Let's take some red litmus paper and apply it to this solution. What do we notice happen? Well, it turns, turns blue, so we get red litmus paper. turning blue. Let's take some blue litmus paper and see what the second solution does to blue litmus paper. It will stay blue. Okay. So there's there's one test that we can do and we also know that um, uh, we can we can do some other tests for acids and bases. Uh, one of the things that acids and bases have in common is that they can conduct electricity. So this particular so solution can conduct electricity. And this one can also conduct electricity. So they both conduct electricity. Uh, one of the other things that empirically people noticed about acids, um, you know, a couple hundred years ago, was that acids tend to react with metal. So I just dropped a, um, a strip of magnesium metal, and particularly acids will react with a metal to produce hydrogen gas. And... Um, I don't have the uh, material with, with me now to test for hydrogen gas, but uh, you might remember how we tested for hydrogen gas in the past. 
uh, we could collect this in a tube and uh, do a flame test with it. Um, this gas, if we collect it in the presence of a flame, it will uh, combust and it will give off this little popping sound. There's a mini explosion that occurs when I collect this gas and put it in the presence of a flame. Let's try this piece of metal over here. And the second solution, and it doesn't really appear to be doing anything. Uh, so solution one seemed like there's a very vigorous reaction. Hopefully you can see the bubbles coming off there. Uh, we're producing lots and lots of bubbles. I might, let's see, can you see it any better? Maybe not. Anyway, the, the metal is not reacting in this solution. It is reacting in this one. So uh, what do I notice about this one? Well, this solution, it reacts with metal to produce hydrogen gas. This one, not so much. Is it reacting? produce hydrogen gas there is no bubbling so uh, here we're, we're, we're saying almost no reaction to produce H2 I don't want to say there's absolutely no reaction because that might not always be true but I don't really notice it empirically I don't notice any sort of reaction occurring here so there's definitely a big difference here okay so th these data here are enough for me to maybe start identifying which which solution is which so uh, I'll maybe pause it pause the video here and maybe you can figure out which one is an acid and which one is a base so just by looking at um, this data here uh, blue litmus paper going red okay conducting electricity and it reacts with metal to produce H2 um, this is what we would use to empirically define an acid. So once again, this is all empirical evidence. And what this means is this is data. This is observations. These are things that we can measure and observe. So we start with observations and collect observations over a long period of time. And um, over a long period of time, people notice that all acids tend to do this kind of stuff. They turn blue litmus paper red. They can conduct electricity. They react with metals to produce hydrogen gas. Um, and bases bases tended to turn red litmus paper blue. They conducted electricity, uh, but they didn't have any sort of reaction to produce hydrogen gas. Um, there's a few more empirical properties we can look at for acids and bases that I've included in the slideshow, but I just want to land here in, um, in, in, in saying that empirical evidence, which is data, observations, measurements, are the things that we you know, can measure in a lab that we can see with our own eyes. Um, we don't really stop there, though. We often have to ask ourselves the question of why. So why is it that acids react with metals to produce hydrogen gas and bases don't? Why is it that acids turn red litmus paper blue, sorry, blue litmus paper red, and bases do the opposite. Okay, why is it that acids taste sour and bases are bitter? Why is it that bases tend to be kind of slippery? Um, and why do they tend to be good cleaning products? You know, whereas a lot of foods tend to have acids. Why, why is this the case? So like why, why do these properties exist for acids and bases? And this question, taking the evidence Asking the question of why leads us to what we call theoretical knowledge. A 
or rather a theory. So what we're going to try to do is put together in the next few lessons a theory of acids and bases. Why do they do what they do? Okay. All right, that's that for this video. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.